Hi, I'm Rob and welcome back to another episode of East Coast Sailing. Today I'm going to be repairing the leaking water pump. Now you might have seen the last video where we've released messages in bottles and we had a pretty serious leak. I lifted up the floorboards and traced it to the water pump. Now the current water pump that I had in it was a Johnson F4B903. So whether you've got an F4B9 or any other model, these principles of stripping the water pump and removal are going to be exactly the same. I'm going to show you how to remove the old unit as well as refurbish it and diagnose exactly why it went wrong. I'll also put some links in the description um, of where you can find serviceable catalogues for your pump which will help you identify what the unit is as well as all the unique uh, part references so you don't need to buy a generic service pack and worry about it's going to be compatible you can buy the individual pieces that have failed on the unit now when i stripped off the old unit i could see that the drive shaft had scratches in it the water pump impeller needed changing and the seal is the reason why all those other things failed because as soon as the seal went it allowed salt water to pass into the bearings as well as on the shaft and it caused a lot of corrosion and that is why the leak happened now you might get to the end of the video and think i'm a little bit out of my technical capability here and you can just buy a new unit now i've seen some replacement units about 180 pounds on ebay i did buy a yamaha one um, which is 370 pounds just because I thought I didn't know how bad the condition was going to be of the other water pump and the last thing I wanted to do is go down a rabbit hole of buying lots of parts and before you know it you're nearly at the same cost of a new water pump but the old unit was serviceable and I spent about £78 in parts um, to get it back to its working glory so now I have a spare unit on board. I'll also talk about part compatibility because I tell you what Yanmar are charging you a fortune and ripping you off now I found some bearings in the water pump that needed to be replaced and I went on the Yamaha website, found the unique ID reference of the bearing and I found that the bearing was £60. Now I found the exact same bearing on an automotive website for 78 pence, so that's a ridiculous markup. I'm also going to give you some massive savings on water pump drive belts as well as the alternator drive belts. If you were to go to Yanmar, they would give you a Mitsubishi M19 belt and that's about £25 and I really struggle to find them in the UK. So what if I told you that I've gone through the pain of buying loads of different drive belts and I can get these for £5 as opposed to £25. So that's five times cheaper. So the first thing we're going to do is remove this alternator belt cover. And this is just a 10mm uh, socket that removes these. Now you can see we've exposed the alternator belt there. That's actually quite loose. So just make a mental note of how tight that is. You don't want to over tighten these belts when we replace them either because it will just put excessive wear on the bearings, on the engine, as well as the alternator. And you can see there that the water pump uh, drive belt is actually contained behind that. And I've got spares, so I'm gonna replace that, replace that. I'm also gonna remove all of the rust off this um, belt pulley here, and then just coat it in a, a rust protective coating, which kind of is a similar color to the engine itself and a dark metallic gray, just to tidy up the engine bay. Right, we're just gonna loosen this top one here as well. Oh, that's tight. Oh. You can see we've got this little access panel in the back bedroom and we need to access this bolt here. So this one's a 12 mil, so two mil bigger than the other ones. So we're just gonna loosen that off and that will allow the alternator to slide out to kind of give some slack on the engine. Right, I'm just going to disconnect the double hose clamp here. Probably going to have a bit of water that will come out, but it'll drain down into the bilge. So I'm just trying to see how this works. I've got the new one there. It's identical, so you can see the adjustment to slacking it off is actually at the bottom, so there's going to be a nut just concealed under there. So I'll try and get the camera and show you. Ah, uh, you can see the nut underneath it, so I need to undo that and find out what size that is. In. And then once we undo that, we'll be able to push 
this belt all the way in. That will slacken that right off. There we go, one culprit water pump. That's leaking. Look at the state of that, that needs a full refurb. Bought the water pump home and put it on the workbench and began removing the six bolts on the top. Remove the cover plate and just pull out the water pump impeller which rests in the keyway. Now we've exposed the lip seal and I can see the spring is actually snapped which means there's not a very good watertight seal around the shaft which caused it to leak. The lip seal spring was exposed to raw seawater which would have rusted and it would have lost its compression along the water pump impeller shaft. This would have caused a leak very quickly after two or three months. Right, I think I've got a solution how to get this nut off so I'm going to put this large screwdriver in the keyway there and then that's going to give me quite a bit of leverage to be able to undo that. Finally got that undone. Oh. So keep all the components together as well. Now we can take the pulley off. That's got a uh, washer behind it. So we'll lay that like that. Now we can take the pulley system apart. We can undo these screws here. So all we've got to do is undo that circlip. Um, this bearing should now pull out. Right, I've got the uh, circlip pliers, so I'm just going to pop them in. There we go. Pop that out there. Now, this should come out, but I'm guessing it's not because it doesn't want to play ball. So I'm going to have to either put a puller on it or give it a bit of gentle persuasion with a uh, hammer. Now I've got a hard plastic mallet there, so it's not going to score the top of it. Go. You can see that housing's nearly come through. A few more taps. There we go. And it's popped out. Having a look at the bearings, I mean, that back bearing looks really good. It's nice and snug. This one, however, I think this is the one that's um, been in contact with fresh water. And you can see the amount of play in it. Look at that. So that bearing is definitely out. So um, new seals, new bearings, and we'll get this um, water pump housing looking brand new. So to separate the bearings, what you can do is you can put a screwdriver inside the uh, keyway. And what we can do is get a big spanner going over the side of it and tap down. And that is how you get the bearings off. Now we've got a list of all the parts that we want to replace. If we pop over to Glasgow Engineering on this particular web page, we can find a whole manual with 450 pages of PDF and we'll find our specific model number, which is a Johnson F4B903. If we go to page 41, that will show us the exact page. I've also put the link in the video description if you can't find it. So we need part five, which is a shaft. We need part 15, which is an O-ring at the front. We need two sets of ball bearings. We also need the lip seal at 18 and 21 for a new impeller. You'll notice there's two sets of columns there. You've got JP part number as well as Yanmar. So you might have to check both online to find the specific part. I ordered all my replacement parts from French Marine Motors apart from the bearings, which I'll go on to in a minute. Buying two of these bearings from Yanmar came in at a total of £84.35. I recognise the bearing references as they're generic and used in many applications. And this hunch paid off as I found some bearings on bolt and engineering products. I found both bearings on this website for £1.46 which saves you £82.89. Now there's nothing difficult about this water pump rebuild. All you need is a laptop with all the pictures and videos of you disassembling in the unit. Just be clean and organised with your setup and you don't want to get any contamination, especially on the rubber water propeller, otherwise that will degrade very quickly. Keep some blueprints on your laptop as well of the uh, PDFs of the part diagrams. And really it's about improvising and making sure you've got the right tools such as the circlet pliers and a few specialist bits. Right, so we're gonna put this little plastic washer and that's gotta go in through the back where the pulley goes and make sure there's four little tangs there that these little uh, recesses don't hit. Next, we've gotta stick the bearing in then, so the smaller one. So I'm going to have to get a hammer and knock that in with a socket. 
So I'm back with supplies. So we've got the uh, bearing in there and it's not actually pushed in properly. So I've got a socket that's gonna sit nicely over that bearing on the outer housing. And we're just gonna punch that in using a bit of force. Just slide that up inside and making sure you don't score the shaft. Right, so we've assembled the water pump shaft there. We've put a little bit of grease on it. So we've got the retaining clip there. We've got the spacer. Then we've got the 6201 bearing. And then we've got the nut that you put on at the back. And that's torqued to literally zero uh, newton meters. And it actually goes anti-clockwise, that one. So you just want to thread it on the hand tight. And then this shaft is ready to go back in the housing, just like that. And that is gonna require a bit of hammering in. So we're just gonna put a socket over it so we don't damage the uh, bearing. We only do need to hammer that in uh, lightly enough just to get the uh, retaining clip on. We're now gonna put the uh, circlet back on. Now I'm gonna put the uh, back bracket on before we go putting the pulley on. Otherwise the pulley uh, blocks access to it. So we're just gonna do these hand tight. We've now got the bracket on, we're gonna slip the washer over and make sure you've got that keyway exposed. We're gonna pop on the pulley. I'm gonna spin that round till it lands nicely in the keyway on another washer and then what we're going to do is put the top locking nut on right next up is a bit of grease another drive shaft there slip on the o-ring then last of all is the water seal now you've got to be really careful i'm going to put loads of grease on this marine grease don't put any old grease on it or petroleum based otherwise you're going to perish it the flat section of the lip seal needs to face downwards and the recess and the spring should be facing you. The lip seal needs to be pushed in so the top of it is flush with the brass housing. Last of all is the water pump impeller. And we're gonna grease up this whole internal shaft area because I don't want any friction on there until the water's primed and inside it. Put a liberal covering over this as well so we can get a good bond with the uh, O-seal. All that's left to do is to test the water pump, see if it works. So I've just rigged up a bucket of water, put a tube into it, and I've got a 12 mil bit on the end of a drill. Let's see if it works. Now, just while I've got this off, I'm gonna clean all this rust up and spray paint that as well, just cause it looks like a bit of a state. So I've just attached a wire brush um, attachment to the drill. I'm just gonna remove all the surface rust of that pulley and then I'll spray paint it once I've cleaned it all up. Look at that, got my little uh, spray painting booth on the boat. Now I'm just gonna give it a quick spray of this high temperature paint. I've got metallic black. It's not quite the um, color match. I did get a little bit misled by um, the cover cap there, look more gray. And I've just realized it says metallic black, but um, we'll give it a go. I'm gonna spray it well and give it a few coatings. Holding the can up vertically. So I'm back down the boat with a fresh head and a selection of different water pump dry belts. Now the old belt I took off the boat was called an, an M19 made by Mitsubishi, all right? Now the M stands for the profile. So if I was to cut this in half and dissect it, you would see that the belt would be 10 mil wide at the top 
and 5.5mm uh, deep. The Z profile is identical to the M profile in every way apart from it's half a millimetre thicker. I found the Mitsubishi M19 belt fits a little bit loose and it doesn't give you much play in the adjustment and if you go to Simply Bearings you can get a Z profile belt which is a Z18 and it's for £4.05 so with VAT and postage it will come to about £6 saving you a whopping £19 and the number after the profile stands for how many inches the circumference of the external belt is and when I fitted this as a, a test run it fitted beautifully so I'm just going to slot this belt and it is a tight fit it doesn't go in particularly easy there's no order or orientation these drive belts have got to go in we're just going to slip that in there and because it is slightly thicker than the original it just needs a bit of teasing in there so now we've got the drive belt in there we just need to slip it over the main crank pulley <sighs> look at that beautiful let's get a couple of bolts on that to hold that back in I'm just going to tighten up the water strainer, Jubilee clips will stop them spinning. We're now going to put the new alternator belt on. I can't quite remember how this went actually. I'm guessing it went around here like this. Now around the big pulley down here. There we go. Now I did buy some giant zip ties. We don't want any chafing on uh, these brackets, so I'm just gonna put it on here. I can't stress the importance of this zip tie because it stops the coolant hose from going back and rubbing it against the alternator belt, which will put a hole through the coolant hose very quickly. Right, all there's left to do now is to tighten up the alternator belt. Um, I did just uh, strap the electronics down there for the ignition uh, where it was before, but faced it down. So if any water does leak out the engine, it's not gonna collect in the box like it was before. I've got the tension of the belt um, pretty good. You know, I've got a bit of slack. I don't want it too tight because you end up uh, damaging the bearings. Um, and also these belts, once they heat up, they will actually get a little bit tighter as well. So uh, I'm going to tighten this bolt down here first. And once that's secured, then I'm going to go for the top alternator and put the cover on and then everything's good to go. Just so you can see, it was this bolt here I was tightening up. That's actually on its minimum adjustment. So the belt must be quite tight because it's brand new. So the old one must have had quite a bit of slack. So now I'm going to tighten up the front side, do the top and then get the uh, cover on and then we're done. So now we're just going to slide the uh, engine cover case on. It's got to go over the top like that and slide in between these two washers. And a quick check of all the nuts and bolts. I've just got to tighten this one on the top here for the alternator. And also do the back. <sighs> Lovely job, all done. And there we have one very tidy engine bay. Thanks for watching East Coast Sailing, and if you've enjoyed today's episode, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications to get the latest videos.